How to become excellent by enabling a culture of change. The journey to operational excellence is a cultural revolution that happens in evolutionary incremental steps. Not only people are used to change, they've developed the habit of change. They are transforming themselves and their processes. Where does continual change happen? When the organization listens to the voice of the customer, we get the opportunity to understand how to improve our product and services and introduce new ones. When people listen to the voice of the processes, they understand where they reduce variations and waste to make processes safer, simpler, better, faster, and cheaper. When leadership listens to the voice of their people, they understand how to empower them, develop them to become better problem solvers and more valuable to the organization as they achieve their goals. When top leadership face business complexity and difficulty, they voice their need to have a clear method to make better decisions, for improving their leadership style, and to create the organization culture. So how do we develop these habits of change? A habit is a behavior that has been repeated enough times to become automatic. This is what you do. Behind every system of actions is a system of beliefs. Your worldview, your self-image, your judgments about yourself and others. This is who you are, your identity. The most practical way to change who you are, what you believe, is to change what you do. True behavior change is identity change. The more you repeat a behavior, the more you reinforce the identity associated with that behavior. The focus is on who you wish to become, and this will define what you will achieve. The outcome, the goals or challenges, are what you wish to achieve. What is important is the direction of change. The outcome will look after itself if the identity changes. Let's take examples of habit forming that transforms organizations. In the case of leaders who believe that they are being transformed into servant leaders, their behavior is to coach their people. The outcome of that coaching is a thinking people. In the case of the people in the organization who think of themselves as becoming problem solvers, their behavior is to improve processes. The outcome? Or improve processes. So what are some of the practice routines that change people and leadership identities? Kata is the Japanese word for practice routine. Kata are structured routines to practice deliberately especially at the beginning, so their pattern becomes a habit and leaves you with new abilities. Routines are for learning fundamentals that you can build on. Routines are a way of transferring skills and developing shared abilities and mindset in a team or organization. This is where the improvement cutter is applied on the operational excellence journey. It responds to the voice of the process by making it safer, easier, better, faster and cheaper. The first practice routine that will develop the identity of a problem solver is called the improvement cutter. This is a cycle of improvement. We determine where we want to go, the challenge. It can be a personal challenge such as, in 24 months I'll run a marathon. Or a business one, for example, we'll increase new product sales to 20% of total sales in 18 months. From the outset, the challenge seems almost impossible to achieve. We need to understand where we are now. That is the current condition. Then we define the next short-term goal that will connect the current condition to our challenge. It is the next target condition. Now we make our way towards the target condition. We can't see too far in the future. There is a limit to our knowledge. We push the threshold of our knowledge every time we take the next step towards the target condition. On our journey, we find unforeseen issues. They are obstacles. We don't go around the obstacles. We eliminate them. Since we don't usually have a solution, we experiment until the obstacle is removed. Every time we experiment, we learn. And this is how we push our threshold of knowledge toward the target condition. When we reach it, we decide on the next target condition, and again, until we meet our challenge.
Then we start again with a new challenge. Actually, it isn't that simple. And this is how the reality looks like. Unknown obstacles await us. And we don't see them until we experiment at our current knowledge threshold. The improvement cutter gives us confidence that we'll achieve our target condition and eventually the challenge. We know how to do it using the plan, do, check and adjust cycle. We progress through continual experimentation. This transforms our identity. We become problem solvers. The improvement cutter looks like a lot of work. How does an employee actively reach for her professional goals, that is her challenges and associated target conditions? In the daily work rush, the default mode for any employee is usually to work on urgent operational matters. They are stuck in the urgency trap. There isn't much time, or time at all, to focus on important activities that will enable employees to achieve professional goals. There is little appetite to overcome the difficulty of learning new skills that will lead to process improvements when they are facing ongoing work pressures, monkeys clinging on their backs. Unless there is both an incentive and ongoing support. The only person who can continually support the learner to develop a scientific thinking mind is her manager, her coach. With the coaching cutter, the coach will support the learner to overcome her mistakes, discomfort and setbacks that invariably come when learning new skills and dealing with real-life obstacles. The coach will provide procedural guidance to accompany the coachee to achieve challenging real target conditions on her way to become a thinking person. The coach will then share the coachee's success. Giving people a certain degree of control over their work fulfills the need for freedom and provides opportunity for taking joy in work. As a footnote, the coaching cutter is specific to the improvement cutter and not a general mentoring practice. This is where the coaching cutter is applied on the operational excellence journey. It responds to the voice of the people. It enables leadership to empower them and become a thinking people. In the early stage of the coaching engagement, the coach will use the five coaching routine questions at every PDCA cycle the coachee will execute. They are, what is the target condition? What is the actual condition? What obstacles do you think are preventing you from reaching the target condition? What is your next step and what do you expect? How quickly can we go and see what we have learned from taking that step? Over time, as the coach internalizes the scientific thinking approach, she develops her own style. Yet, the fundamentals remain the same. Accompany the coachee to develop an experimental approach to learn and eliminate obstacles. We've seen how the coaching cutter enables development of the people in the organization. But who will support the top leadership to develop the habit of coaching and the scientific thinking themselves? The job of executives is taxing enough. They need support to make sense of business complexity and difficulty. They need to develop the habit to use a clear method to make better decisions, for improving their leadership style, and to create the organization culture. So how would they develop these habits of change? This is the role of the executive coach. She will practice the coaching cutter to enable the executive to acquire the improvement cutter themselves. In turn, the executive will apply the scientific thinking to meet personal and business goals and transform into the ultimate coach and servant leader. So what are the benefits of the coaching cutter to the coach? She will grasp a deeper understanding of the reality and issues the coachee faces, the management system, its processes, and dependencies with other functions, the various risks and opportunities for the business. She also develops a fact and risk-based thinking. She develops the ability to juggle strategic, systemic, and operational focus. The coach learns to empower and lead with authority and humility. Authority due to better decision-making for both the coach and the coachee, alignment of the coachee goals to the business's objectives, and her willing subordination based on mutual respect. Humility because leaders learn to say, I don't know the answer, let's go and experiment. 
She reinforces her identity of a servant leader that makes the time and learns to make her subordinates successful. In summary, with the coaching cutter, the coach contributes to intentionally develop a culture of respect and continual improvement.